all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler, and you've arrived at day 81 of the 100 Days of Zentangle Project 2020. Thank you guys so much for being with me today. Our tangle for today is going to be a Zentangle original pattern. It is called, or pronounced, nice. And uh, it is one that does not have a published step out. So uh, I think that uh, Melinda Barlow has some nice videos out. So I normally in that case, if it doesn't have a published, if Zentangle has not published a step out for it, then I try to stay away from it. But if it's already out here, since uh, Melinda has done it uh, out here, then I think it's gonna be okay. Also, I wanted to let you know that there is uh, a link on Linda Farmer's article about this to um, CZT Margaret Bremner's, Bremer, Bremner's site, and uh, it is called The Enthusiastic Artist, and she has got a whole blog post of different variations of this, and we're going to try maybe one or two of those today and see what happens. In its essence, as all Zentangle original patterns are, this is pretty simple to do, so let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and step this, whoops, how did this get dirty that fast? <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and step this out, and then I have prepared a, an ink tense tile for me to work on today. So uh, we'll get there in a second. So the way you do this, you draw a circle or an orb, since a circle is actually a geometric term, and nothing we do here is, is uh geometric it's all tangled all right now you put a dot in the center and you're going to divide this up like a piece of pie okay or pie pieces like a pie and there's going to be eight pieces so we're going to start with an up and down division we're going to go straight across all right I'm going to draw in two more division lines. All right. So now you have eight pie pieces. All right. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to place a dot here in the upper edge of each one of these pie pieces. And I honestly did not get my um, my uh, primer from CZT training out to look at the way the step outs are done. So this is how I'm gonna draw it and I think you guys are gonna find it easy. All right, so what we want now is we're going to take this dot and we're going to make a slanted line or a diagonal line up to the corner of the pie pieces next to it okay so that it looks like this and then we're going to draw a line up from the center now you see where we're going with this okay and you can do these in whatever order you would like i find it easier if you get in a rhythm with these but then i also seem to forget things when i do that so uh, we'll see how it goes. And you can tell by now that you can adjust how this looks by where you place these dots. You can change them up and uh, end up with a completely different uh, outcome. And even without the center lines coming up, this looks pretty good. So now let's add those up to the tip where the dot is. Just a simple straight line from center out. Remembering to turn your tile, taking some deep breaths. All right. So now, if I'm not mistaken, what they do is they black every other, or ink rather, every other one of these uh, little sections. So 
So I'm going to take my 08, so that does not uh, take so long. I found another one, so yay. <laughs> and it works, so yay. All right, so you can pick either side that you want. So I'm gonna pick this side since that's where my stray marks happen to be. And then you just ink every other one in. Take your time. Do a nice job. Okay. Every other one. And as long as you have an even number here, which you should if you divided it like a pie, you'll be good to go. Now you can divide this up to uh, twelfths if you uh, come in here and divide these eight again in half and that will still work of course most multiples of two I think will probably be although you probably need eight to really make this work and uh, with the pattern the way it is You guys, if you want to experiment, do. In one of the examples in Margaret's um, blog post, she has you changing the tip of these to a more flower-like tip, which is also definitely a doable thing. And we are going to explore that on the tile. The way you draw your dividing lines here from your dots makes a difference in how the tips look. You can have them straight, sharp like this, or you can round them. Which is cool. You also don't have to black every other one. You could just shade it with a graphite pencil and still get the same general effect. It just won't be quite as dramatic. I'm going to show you an, a variation using an orb shape. Well, they're all sort of orb shapes, aren't they? Changing the, the kind of lines you draw. Well, I'll show you. I'll show you. I don't want to confuse anybody. This is fairly simple if you can deal with the blacking or the inking. Okay, so this is where we're at. Now, I think, I think on the step out, they handle, there's my other pen, they handle the edges like this. They're just, they just draw these R lines, whoops, and fill these areas like this. And to varying degrees, I get this okay and don't. If you do this right, they look like they go in rows around it, but I have found that uh, pretty difficult to accomplish. So we're gonna find out. I need to slow down and take my time. That's part of my issue right now. Because I'm in a hurry.
We have Caden visiting us again right now, which is pretty awesome. He'll be gone in a couple of weeks and we are sad to see him go. He better be up here visiting us all the time. All right. So this is the pattern nice, okay? Now, what can we do with this? Well, let's go to pick up our tile and see where we end up with this. Okay, sometimes I like to do these tiles um, simply because if the tangle is more of a simple type of a thing, then these will bring a lot of interest uh, to them. So uh, let's see what happens. So I'm going to put one up here in the corner on the left. And so I'm going to try to draw my orb. up here, nice and big. And of course it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to work, okay? So this is what I have. So what I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you guys how to make this look like uh, it's 3D, okay? And so I'm going to put my center dot off to the side, all right, like this. And then I'm going to draw my first straight line to divide this tile right through it, okay? Now this is still the point that I'm going to aim all my lines at, all right? Now let's see if I can do this. I have not practiced this. Let's see if I can do it. So now what I want to do is I want to add my pie shapes with a rounded line here. Um, let me tick these out. Uh, let's do the side to side one. And I'm going to round this slightly, uh, curve the line slightly like this. And I don't know again if I'm doing the right thing, but we're gonna try it, okay? So these are two of my pie pieces. Right? So we're gonna do the same thing and we're gonna round these as we go. So, one, two. Um, okay, so let's do the one, two on the other side of this. So these are gonna be curved down like this. And then, so that's one, two, three, four. So we need to divide these all right, so we're gonna have a big curved line on this right into the center. I bet I turned this the wrong way and these should have gone, uh, I don't know. We're gonna find out if it'll work. I do not like this kind of surprise. Maybe, I don't know. We're gonna find out if it'll work. So, okay. So next, I need to put in my dots at the top of my wedges. Okay, then I'm going to make my diagonal lines from the dot to the corner Now I'm just gonna sort of go with the flow here and see what happens since I am not at all sure this is this configuration is going to work for me, but uh, I'm going to finish it out and see. Like I said, I think I have curved my lines the wrong way, but uh, again, we're gonna find out.
Okay, now I'm going to add that center line and I'm going to curve it so that it matches the ones around it. Now this one, <laughs> I'm not sure which way to curve. So I'm gonna go with this sort of a thing, sort of make it neutral. Fairly certain I turned those the wrong way, but I think this is gonna work out anyway. We're gonna find out. Well, this is funky and fun for sure. I kind of like it. I definitely turned these curves the wrong way, but this is gonna be okay. So now uh, the question is, what do I want to do? Do I want to black every other one? Do I want to do a fill pattern? Uh, what do I want to do? Now I'm tempted to do my little hatch lines in and uh, see how that works out. But the last time was kind of scary. Um, let's go ahead and black these and see what happens. Is this, nope. Wrong pen. <clears throat> if you have a zero 08, those are nice to keep around for this kind of situation. And I'm sure that you guys are gonna do a much better job with this rounded thing. Go to Margaret's site, use the link on Tangle Patterns and go visit Margaret's site and see, uh, see how she does that. Catch me up. Now you notice I curved, went ahead and curved my, except for these poor things, I went ahead and curved my lines coming in and out here. I really like the curved effect. But you do not have to do that, of course. You don't have to do any of this. You can put your dots in the middle and go straight and just have a very good time with this. One of the cool things about these, these ink tents backgrounds is that um, even with this kind of a situation, they bring some interest to the sections that are not inked. Breathe, Cindy. Breathe. Breathe with me, guys. So important to take good, deep breaths. Keep that brain saturated with oxygen. So that your eyes are working well, and your body's relaxed, and you are getting the maximum benefit out of this time. definitely should have turned these the other way. I'm going to be going back to Margaret's site and see where I went wrong with these two, but I'm pretty sure I just curved, made the curve the wrong way, the wrong direction, in that it should have curved this way instead of going this way. But we're going to have a different result, and that's okay. I'm going to look at it as exploration. Now we learned something. Still looks pretty cool. So I'm definitely not going to worry about it. Yeah. 
can replace the 08 if we keep this up. Okay, one more. It's definitely needing some ink here. The more upright I hold it, the better my ink flow is. These technical pens are made to be drawn with straight up and down, which is difficult for most of us because we learn to draw with the, our ink pens slanted. But I get a whole lot more ink out of this if I go straight up and down than I do sideways. And that's what causes the edges of your nib to wear out quickly is, is by drawing on the side. The tip is meant to be drawn on straight up and down, which again, I rarely manage to get completely straight up and down. But in this instance, it's, it goes a lot faster if I do. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to order some more eights. Okay, so uh, this isn't perfect, but I still like the way it turned out very much. So uh, let's do, let's do some more. And I think, so I also had an alternate plan for this part, even though the circle is part of the pattern, you could theoretically draw it in pencil and then have this, um, this element just out on its own. So that's one idea. Um, what else can we do here? I really love this one. I'm gonna go ahead and fill it in, taking my time with some nice even auras. No, they're sort of even. draw in another one. This time I think I'm going to draw my orb in pencil, like the bad person I am. Although I do kind of like this, and there are lots of different things you can do with the edging like this. You could also aura in like this. So um, I think I'm going to put one underneath this. and sort of do some overlapping here. Okay. So now I'm going to put my, my dot right in the middle because if I'm gonna overlap, I don't wanna mess around with too much excitement in there. And I'm gonna start my divisions. Okay. That wasn't very straight, was it? That's all right. Okay, so there, those are my eight pieces. I'm gonna go around here with my dots.
draw in my slanted lines. And on this one, I'm gonna try to do Margaret's little thing where she's putting these uh, little flower tips on here. Like this. So I love that idea, of course, it's me. That was a little bit messy. That's all right. Okay, and then we're gonna add our center line. But you guys are gonna love Margaret's article. You should definitely go check it out. It will inspire you with a lot of different ideas. On how you can do this pattern. So I really love that. I love the tips on that. Um, I think, hmm, should I, should I? I think I'm going to try my hatch lines here and see what happens. Um, do I want to switch to my zero one? That is the question. I believe I do. Mm, sepia. I always have to double check. Is that sepia too? What are these sepia pins doing in my little travel go thing? Oh, I moved them out. No, oh, one of these is. Why are they? Mm, I don't know. They look black. Let's find out. Yeah, that's black. Okay. Just had to make sure. All right. So I'm going to start these and I'm going to curve these hatch lines with the top. like this. Well, those are not so much hatch lines as division lines, are they? Let's see if we can... Not really hatching. All right, poor thing. It'll be interesting looking for sure. <clears throat> it's interesting. I definitely like the tips of this. Um, I think in retrospect, I will probably keep drawing in this outer edge with ink. Hmm. 
I mean, I suppose. My goal is to do things that do not require a an eraser. And this one would require an eraser. So I think on this, I want to try uh, some Aura lines that follow this. Like that. Hmm. Not sure that really enhances that at all. What if we blacked it or inked it rather? Let's find out since that's our option right now. I kind of like this contrast. Right. That's fine. More dry. Okay, so I am going to put another one in here. I think I will. I really want to try this again and see if I can get it right. Um, we got five o'clock traffic music going on. 
So let's start our straight line here. We'll do our cross line here. And I'm going to curve the same way to divide each one of these. That's how you're supposed to do this. Check me out. All right, now. I'm gonna try putting my dots about midway on this one and see what kind of a difference I get. It's going to make the petals much, um, much different looking, I think. Okay, so let's see if we can do this. crazy let it happen it does not have to be perfect and I like doing things like this because it teaches me things it teaches me uh, things drawing these orbs in different ways I think I finally got this right so that makes me happy and I really like this look Okay, so I like that one better. And I think I'm going to do my lines. But on this one, instead of blacking or hatching uh, the sides every other one, I'm just going to use a colored pencil, I think, to give that a little 3D dimension. If you're gonna draw in these lines, these rounded lines on the tops around here, my suggestion is try really hard not to curve your lines in at the last minute. Try to keep them so that they look like they could travel. See, if I did this one right here, it would travel in this way. And I really want my lines to be uh, consistent going out. So that is something that I have been struggling with. Okay, so now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a colored pencil. Hopefully I can put my hands on it. It's my green, it's my grass green uh, Verithin. No, nope, this is peacock green. Well, that would work. I really wanted my grass green one. Grass green, here we go. Okay, this is kind of a brightish uh, grass green uh, color. And uh, it's just gonna give us a little bit of dimension here on every other petal. 
that we still have that 3D look, but it's not so uh, stark and serious as it, when we are using this to black. So I'm just stroking in some color and uh, I will come back over here with a tortillon with my blending solution and sort of even this out. A lot of times when I use Verithins, I don't bother to blend it. Um, the color lay down is fairly good and I don't necessarily want the color to be matte looking, if that, if that makes sense. I sort of want it to be transparent and float on top the way that, that it does. So it really depends on what you're wanting, but because we're making something 3D here, uh, then I think maybe if I smooth that blend out, that might be a good thing here. And I can use a tortillon for that. I'll just get, <clears throat> if I dissolve the wax though with my blending solution, I'll get more color here. I really like the way that looks with the green. And I may come in with my peacock green and go around the center and sort of give some uh, dimension to that too. But this works very well. Okay, really, really like that. Blends right in with the background, but uh, is, is still uh, enough to make this 3D. So instead of my blending solution, I'm gonna see if I've got enough alcohol left in this to uh, make this happen. We'll find out. This is just regular rubbing alcohol that I put in my Copic blender pen. It's just not at quite as nice a blend and I feel like it dries out, makes things look dry. The colors don't look as, as vibrant. And I probably will go over this with the pencil again. And what this does is it just releases the wax pigment or the wax uh, binding agent that they use in the pencils. and allows the pigment to uh, go down into the tooth of the paper, which is what we want. I'm running out of juice on this one. I'm gonna turn around and use the big side on the bottom. Let's see if I can do that without making a big mess. And make sure it's clean, which is a good thing. All right. I think my, my uh, marker, blender marker, was very clean when I did that one. I definitely put a little more green on there. But anyway. And you'll notice when you use an alcohol blender or uh, your blending solution that your color, will, your pigment will go right over that really smoothly if it's still damp. All right. There we go. Okay, 
So that's our next one. They're kind of fun. So uh, I am going to, let's see. I need to lift this line out later I will I think this should go down here all right and so on this one I think I'll just put my dot in the middle or in the sort of middle Okay, so uh, on this one, no, let's start and see what happens. And remember, you can curve these or do them straight as you will. I just happen to like mine curvy. It's a personal choice. You do not have to have yours that way. She also has, Margaret does, has an example of this where you um, uh, put your dots uh, off center in on the, the, the on the inner division. Who? And uh, that might reveal some interesting results as well. I think I'm going to use one of the fill uh, ideas that she had. So there is lots of inspiration on that, on that uh, article, so uh, you really do want to go and check it out. Okay. So what I think I'm going to do on this one is um, do one of the fills they did uh, on, the, on, the, on Margaret's blog. And what she did was she filled in every other one with orbs, sort of like in the Tangle Pattern perk. mushed in together. And then go back and black in your uh, interstices, your little blank spots. That should make this uh, completely different looking. So let's find out what happens. I'm putting my big orb in right there where it's the biggest, uh, uh, there's the most room. And then I'm using that as my center point and moving out from there. like this. Also very interesting and dynamic. And 
I intend to shade these uh, big orbs individually so they really pop out. That's kind of cool looking. some partial orbs here. But it's still the same process. You're still filling these two lines with orbs and then mushing them up together. And blacking or inking in your interstices. So this is pretty. I really like this. I like that. It's very dynamic. Um, okay, right here. up really quickly. We have got a kid to go to Kung Fu today. And we've got another kid waiting for me to be done with this thing. Last one, and then I'm going to have to leave it here. All right, remember, when you are shading these little orbs, you just want to put a little crescent of color of graphite on one side, and then blend that out, and that's going to give these a really dynamic look. You can also shade behind each one. Uh, I'm sorry I don't have time to go over shading and such today or embellishing anymore, uh, but I'm going to leave it here with you for now. Um, thank you so much for being with me today, and I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. 